Welcome to tonight's homework help for uh, Thursday, August 30th, 2012. Uh, let's jump right in. We have multiplying integers. Okay, here we have the integer product rule, so we know that a positive times a positive equals a positive. A positive times a negative equals a negative. A negative times a positive is also negative, but a negative times a negative is a positive. We want to decide here whether each product is positive or negative. Recall or remember that product means uh, what you get from multiplying. Uh, it says here the first one is done for you. Seven times, okay, this little bullet here, remember that means multiplication or times. Seven times negative two is going to be a negative, so you'd circle the negative. I'll do uh, one more here for you as an example. Um, I don't, here's, here's a good one. This one says negative 81 times negative 83. Well, I have a negative times a negative. So I, I can look up here and I can see negative times a negative is positive. So then I'll go ahead and grab my red pen and circle positive. Okay, moving on to the uh, lower half of the worksheet. We see it says find each product. Again, a product is what we get when we multiply things, and this little bullet symbol here means multiplication. Again, the first one is done for you. You have negative 9 times positive 3. Um, so if we go back up here, uh, negative times a positive would be, oops, I'm moving it. There we go. Negative times a positive is negative. Okay? So we know that our answer is going to be negative 27. As you can see here, they made negative 27 and circled it. I'll do uh, one of these ones down here for you. Uh, and you may not be familiar with this notation, but we have a parentheses here uh, around the negative 2, a parentheses around the negative 3, and a parentheses around the 4. That essentially means the same thing as if I wrote it as negative 2 times negative 3 times 4. Okay. The, uh, if you have an object that has parentheses next to another object that has parentheses, that means that there's multiplication happening between the two of them. So to figure this problem out, I don't necessarily have to rewrite it like that. I just know that I have uh, a negative times a negative is going to give me a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. And then I have, so I know that the product of these two is positive, and then I have to multiply it by 4, which is also positive. So if I go back up here, I can see that a positive times a positive will give me a positive. So in the end, our answer should be positive. Then I can just realize that the answer should be positive and just do the regular multiplication um, on my own. So let's see here. Uh, it's not letting me erase, so we will try something else here. Okay, well it doesn't look like I'll be able to erase this part, so uh, I know that uh, uh, the answer is going to be positive for this one, so uh, I have uh, 2 times uh, two times 3 is 6, so negative 2 times negative 3, negative times negative is a positive, so that will be positive 6 times a positive 4. Well, I know positive 6 times po positive 4 is 24. Okay. Um, I would prefer to see your work uh, here. So um, what I should see is something like, well, this is positive 6 times 4 equals 24. Okay. Moving on to the next page. Here we read the track team on the back side. The track team was practicing jumping skills. Sarah and Brian are both jumping. After two jumps, their coach marked their spots on the jumping mat. So Sarah jumped, it looks like four bars in her first jump and four more bars in her second jump. Brian, it looks like he jumped two bars in his first jump and two more bars in his second jump. Looks like Brian doesn't jump as far as Sarah. Anyways, Brian and Sarah always take the same size jumps. How many jumps will Sarah take to take to the finish line? So we have to think, she's taking four with each jump, but they're asking, uh, will it take to the, get to the finish line? So starting from this point, we start counting four more by fours. So one, two, and so on and so forth until you figure out how many jumps it would take Sarah to get to the end. You do the same with Brian, except instead of counting by fours, you can see that we're going to need to count by twos. So you go one, two, 
three, and you keep on going until you get to the end, and you'll figure out how many jumps it takes Brian. Um, then you want to figure out here who will take more jumps to the finish line. Uh, so that should be pretty obvious, um, whoever's jumps are shorter. Uh, who will get to the finish line first? Um, that would be probably the person that has to take the least amount of jumps. Okay, And then I want you to explain how you know who would finish first. So you need to write in English sentences how you know uh, who would finish first. Okay, I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to text or call Mr. Turietta or Mr. Schlepper. The uh, numbers are on the bottom here, as you can see. Oops. And uh, we wish you luck. Go Bears! Rawr!